to Mr. Eddie Smallwood, Chairman of the Gujarat Reference Group Aboriginal Corporation. Mr. Tracy Solomon, Burdekin Catholic High School, adopted Gujarat Land and Sea Ranger. Mr. Jim Gaston and other Gujarat Land and Sea Rangers. Parents and carers of our Indigenous students. To the Kaka Nimrod Dancers, Badu Island Dance Group. Ms. Christa O'Connor, TCE Indigenous Education Advisor. Mayor Lynn McLaughlin, Burdekin Shire Council. Father Sibby and Father Daniel from our Sacred Heart Parish and Combined Parishes of the Burdekin. Mrs. Manda Jones, Principal of St. Francis School, teachers, students and other guests. What a mully. Today we gather as a community for our NAIDOC ceremony, which is a celebration of the history, culture and achievements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. NAIDOC stands for National Aborigine and Islander Day Observance Committee and its origins can be traced back to the emergence of Aboriginal groups in the 1920s, which sought to increase the awareness in the wider community of the status and treatment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. This year's theme is Heal Country, and it invites us all to consider how our environment is connected to people and how this impacts on the well-being of us all. Heal Country calls for stronger measures to recognise, protect and maintain all aspects of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture and heritage. For our Burdick and Catholic High School community, Heal Country can mean many things. From continuing to raise awareness and engagement in sustainable projects such as our solar project, reef guardianship and recycling, to acknowledgement of country, the traditional owners and the contributions and rich history and culture of our First Nations peoples. The essential foundation for this is to continue to enhance our relationship with Gujarat and with the wider Burdekin community. I would now like to invite Mr. Eddie Smallwood, the Chairman of the Gujarat Reference Group and Aboriginal Corporation to present our Welcome to Country. Waramuli everyone, on behalf of the Bindu people, I'd like to welcome you all here today to celebrate Night Out. It's about sharing our culture with you, but it's also sharing what we can do in the future. Heal Country is the theme for Night Out this year, and I'm going to do a presentation in a few more minutes about Healing Country with all my different partners I work with. But I think about everyone who is in here, in this room today. It's about healing country and, you know, just cleaning rubbish up around the streets and the beaches. You know, that's a, that's a way of healing country too. But you all got to be together, not as one. It's not about indigenous people, just the healing country. It's about everyone. So I'd like to um, just start my presentation. Um, So those are a few of our um, partners that we work with. And all of these partners here, um, Mount Carlton, North Queensland Dry Tropics, Rural Fire Brigade. Our Gujarat Rangers are a Rural Fire Brigade and um, we've been working in partnership with the Rural Fire Brigade for a few years now. Biodiversity, Greening Australia and WWF. There's also Parks and Wildlife, uh, James Cook University, uh, who we do a lot of work with. But um, Burdick and Shire Council, we do a lot of work with. I'm getting reminded here by the, <laughs> by the mayor. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Hey? I can't hear. Oh, yeah, and with Sunday Shire Council too, but um, we're in the Burdick and now, so we'll just concentrate here. So, yeah, could we... Um, Go, go ahead with the presentation, thanks.
the NAIDOC theme this year is um, Healing the Country and I think it's a whole opportunity here for everyone to get together and work on country. If you talk about healing, that means there's a wound, there's a scar, something's happened. Somebody's hurting. In this case, it's not only the first peoples of this place, but it's also country. Country is hurting. We've been looking after country for many years. We all have got a job to do, not just nutrition owners, but everyone. It's important to heal country because once we lose all the rainforest and animals and stuff like that, then we're going to be trying to do everything we can to get it back to how it used to be. Be able to have that connection back on country and go out and just bring back all the practices we used to do and look at all the sites that are being lost. Walk in the same paths that, you know, my ancestors walk, it gives you, it makes you feel proud to go back out there and be able to learn what they were learning and get the skills and knowledge. We all need to come together to heal country. And we can only do that through partnership, through respect, through an understanding whereby we listen to each other. Only then, when that happens, we can start the process of healing. Even just with beach cleanups, that's still cleaning up the land. It's stopping rubbish getting into the waterways. And then it has effect on a lot of our marine life. So healing our country is not just about Indigenous people healing it, it's about everyone. So healing it now while we have the opportunity to saves us all the trouble further down the track trying to save save animals and like plants and stuff from extinction. We'll do it now while we can. So that video is with um, WWF, Girigan Rangers and uh, Gujarat Rangers. We work together really closely. So this is what we call the pocket. This is another project we've done with NQ Dry Tropics and Mount Carlton Mine. Um, it's about getting um, some trainees and getting them on, on to, to work. Um, this is around the uh, Plantation Creek um, where the boat ramp is. We're here today to launch the Evolution Protecting Beach Scrub Communities project. It's funded by Evolution Mines, the Mount Carlton Gold Mine, and the work's going to be done by the Gujarat trainees. The smoking ceremony is to let the spirits know that you're here on country, but it's also to calm your own spirits, make you feel better while you're on this country. This is all Bindle country behind me and four trainees have come on board to doing some work for Gujarat but also looking after country. I really cherish coming here. I love seeing this country. I love the salt, the mangroves just there and the fresh water over on my right shoulder. Everything is here. Bush tucker medicine, you could walk anywhere and most of the plants are all got something to offer us. We're working with Gujarat Rangers and with NQ Dry Tropics on a sustainability project to regenerate and to work on weed control for the protected beach scrub. A lot of the community work is really close to our hearts. It's definitely in our backyards and uh, everyone has a really personal connection to the regeneration projects. Today to learn about BioCat and what that is is a biocondition assessment. And what that involves is just measuring out a certain area on the ground and identifying the weeds within that area, progress further into the scrubland and do it again and then by the end of that you come up with a percentage about how many weeds are affecting that area. It gives us an idea of what we got to do, how to prepare for that. They're learning the process of vegetation assessment so that they can use it on any project site that they might potentially work on in the future. They're also learnt how to do safe chemical handling so we did their chemical handling certificates the other day. In this particular instance they're wanting to know 
Is their project going to do something? Is it going to accomplish what we want them to do? Is it going to change the condition of the, of the project site? Is the beach scrub going to improve over the time of the project? They'll do 20 days on site. There'll be the four trainees and their team leader. And they're also going to learn some basic mapping techniques so that when they're in this project site, which is a fairly thick scrub, that they can map exactly where they've been within the scrub and they can know that they've been to this part of the scrub and then they can work the next bit and then they can work the next bit without doubling up on their project sites. And that's a, a technique that they can use in wherever they're working. As you can see the lantana, how the lantana grows, nothing else grows underneath it. So it doesn't let the natives come through. Once we kill those off, well, the natives will be able to come through. That's a dead weed. We like dead weed. We like dead weed. It's a good success when you see the amount of lantana or weeds that you've sprayed and they're not here anymore. We'll be coming back in May to do a health check that we um, first done before we started to see what effect we've had with our spraying. do some work around Vibscox Bridge um, up along the Horton. Um, like I said to you before, we are also a rural fire brigade and our area we look after is um, from Alva Beach to the Baratas. Um, Tangle Rail Blue, um, we've done a lot of work with them for beach cleanups. Um, so they're one of our partners too. Watermully, this project's Welcome for James to Bindle Country. My name's Eddie Smallwood. I'm a Bindle traditional owner. Our boundaries between the Ross River and Townsville to the Burdekin River south. One of the main things in our history of our cultural belief is our waterways. The waterways is part of life. And for thousands of years, our people have been utilising fresh water as a, as a food source because it's also our supermarket. Because there's a lot of fish turtles, crocodiles and other species of animals that utilise the fresh water. Also it's very good for the ground area for our bush tucker. Our bush tucker is, is a very significant thing for us and if we haven't got fresh waterways and healthy waterways it'll uh, change the surrounding area. So behind me is Mount Elliot. Mount Elliot Creek is one of, the, one of our significant uh, areas that has been documented in the late 1846 by a man named James Morrell who lived with our personal owners from this region. And he lived with the Aboriginal people for 17 years. And what he said here was it's just part of our fresh water and, and the food source was a very plentiful. Down further where the ponds meet the salt water, there was a lot of crocodiles in those ponds. Um, he called them alligators in those days, but they're crocodiles in Australia. But it's good to have a fresh and clean waterways because a lot of our food sources were the freshwater turtles. And we come back here and do monitoring on those turtles and see the health of them. If you've got a healthy waterway, you get a healthy turtle. There are different species, uh, two species here, but I think that the main thing is, is, is the making sure that the waterways are healthier.
also we've got a partnership with Ames. Um, so um, they actually um, working with all the Trish loans around Australia and um, we've got a really close relationship with them and we've just got a little short video for them. So these pictures were taken at Davies Reef, which is on um, Bindle Waterway, so still part of our Bindle country. Watermali, welcome to Saltwater Country. For thousands of years, our people have been looking after land and sea. This environment is worth protecting for our future generations. We want you to come and experience a cultural day with our Gujira Rangers. Waramuli. This is our information centre here. There is literally hundreds of these sites all over the country. Thousands of years of, of um, knowledge, a knowledge base that we can't measure. You had to know what you were eating. To listen is the key to learning about all of our bush foods, medicine. This is a fish poison, bush medicine, calendar tree. So it's got multiple uses. This one tree is perfume. As soon as we smell it, we know, oh, we say it's Giramal now, which is spring. The Gujarat Rangers want you to come and experience our culture, our knowledge, and our country. This land, this sea. The Gungu 2 to the Gungu 1. We just leave the wharf now. Yeah, we'll just head out from the duck hole here, Ben. Head over to uh, Gordon Beach, off the Big Mango. And uh, we'll see for some turtles over there. We'll radio when we uh, sight any turtles. Over. Large to Gujira 1. Did you spot any turtles yet? We are the protectors of the Gungu, the sea turtle. Right here, mate. Well, right, I can't see him. Got to get up here. Okay. He's right in front of you. Straight out, go. It's Gangu at a young 
to the country. We want you to come and experience a cultural day with our Gujarat Rangers. For the past two days, the Brave Wilderness team and I have been out with the Gudija Rangers and we have been searching for green sea turtles. I love turtles, most people know that. And it's so important to protect the environments that these animals live in. Many of these turtle species are indicators as to how healthy the environment is. So for us today to be out there and see very healthy green sea turtles tells us that this environment just outside of Bowen, Australia is incredibly healthy, which makes my heart happy. My experience working with the Gujada Rangers was absolutely incredible. Now specifically, I was working alongside Aaron, who's been catching turtles for quite some time. This guy catches turtles better than anybody I've ever seen. And just getting to see how the Rangers love these reptiles and how much they want to protect their environments and make sure that not only are the environments staying healthy, but that also these turtles are being kept for and taken care of. You know, we're taking the biometrics of these animals, both their weights and their measurements, and then of course tagging them to make sure that as they're catching these turtles again in the future, that they are continuing to be healthy. Now before I go, I need to give an enormous thank you to WWF Australia and also the Gujada Rangers for everything that they've taught me over the course of the past two days and all the incredible conservation work that they are doing. So with that, <coughs> he's on YouTube and we've had about 8 million hits so far. If you just want to chase him up. Um, the, the real video goes for about 16 minutes, but that was just a short version. But why we need to heal country is because our ancestors left this history lesson for us there. And that's why we've got to make sure we heal country so that we can teach our younger generations when they come through. So on behalf of the Gujarat Reference Group and the Bindal Trishnanas, I just want to thank you all for uh, having me here today and doing this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smallwood. Part of Hill Country is, as you've just seen, hearing voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people talk about the continuing con connection to country and what that means for them. So our proud Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students here at BCH have prepared a presentation about the theme Heal Country and they'd like to share with you right now. year is Hill Country. It calls for us to continue to see greater protections for our lands, waters, our sacred sites and our cultural heritage from exploitation, desecration and destruction. Country. It is more than a place. It is inherent to our identity. When we talk about country, it is spoken as if speaking about a person. Country sustains our lives spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially and culturally. Through our languages and songs, we speak to country. Through our ceremonies and traditions, we sing and celebrate country. And as the country speaks to us. NAIDOC 2021 invites the nation to embrace First Nations cultural knowledge and understanding of country as part of Australia's national heritage. And equally respect the culture and values of Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islanders as they do. The cultures and values of all Australians. 
This year's theme also seeks institutional, structural and collaborative reform. Something generations of our elders and communities have been advocating, marching and fighting for. It's about hearing and actioning the aspirations of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, which are the culmination of generations of consultation and discussions among our nations on a range of issues and grievances. Healing country means resolving many of the outstanding injustices which impact on the lives of our people. We are still waiting for those robust protections. We cannot change the history of this nation, but we can learn from the past by sharing our stories. Truth telling together is healing, and it's time to heal country. After 250 years, our children and our future generations deserve better. Healing country is more than changing a word in anthem. It's about historical, political and administrative landscapes, changing to empower and celebrate Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, nations and heritage. We are looking for significant and lasting change. We cannot afford to let pass this very real opportunities that now presents itself for reform based on the fundamental change in the relationship Australia has with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. NAIDOC 2021 is an opportunity for all Australians to come together to celebrate the rich history, diverse cultures and achievements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the oldest living culture on the planet. Heal country, heal our nation, heal us. We cannot change the history of this nation, but we can learn from the past by sharing our stories. Truth telling together is healing, and it's time to heal country. Heal country. Heal country. Our biblical responsibility. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Lord, we acknowledge our responsibility to care for and bring healing to country and our nation. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to do so. Increase our capacity this NAIDOC week to humble ourselves and listen afresh to truly hear the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you very much, students. I would now like to invite um, Tracy Solomon, our BCHS adopted Goodger Land and Sea Ranger, along with two of our students, uh, Nike Kainuna and Eugene James, to the stage, please. So Tracy, on behalf of the BCHS community, we would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation for all that you do for us and for your care for our country. Please join me in thanking. Thanks again, Trace. Today we're lucky to have a dance group with us, featuring our own Lockie Thomas and his family who have been practicing this dance for many weeks. They're called the Kaka Nimrod Dancers and are performing a dance from Badu Island in the Torres Strait Islanders. And we thank them for sharing their traditional um, Torres Strait Islander culture with us. I would now invite them to the stage. Could you please welcome them to the stage?
uh, Watamuli, everybody, and thank you. Welcome and thank you to everyone who has come together to help celebrate such a joyous occasion where many tribes and cultures are united on this beautiful land we all call our home. Today we will be showing you three dances. This dance troupe were original, originally formed by our Aka, which means grandmother, and grandfather from the 1970s to 1990 on Palm Island until our grandfather passed. So today we dance not only for Nadoc Day, but for Grandad Desmond and the Aka Moira Clark. We are the Kaka Nimrod dancers.
Thank you very much. Let's give them one more round of applause. Fantastic. So that concludes our ceremony today. But it's important now that we continue to reflect on the importance of healing country. Now we've listened and experienced today the fact that Uncle Eddie said that it's not about just Indigenous people, it's each and every one of us need to be involved in healing country and coming together. It's, it's, country is inherent to the identity of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It sustains every aspect of their lives, spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially and culturally. Healing country means embracing First Nations, Nations cultural knowledge and understanding of country as a part of our national heritage. That the culture and values of Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islanders are respected equally to the cultures and values of all Australians. So once again, I would like to thank all of our invited guests. Thank you very much um, to our dancers, to um, Eddie for sharing your knowledge and experience. Um, and I would now invite our Indigenous students to escort our guests over to the hospitality um, for some smoko. So thank you very much for your attendance today.